Okay, hello everyone. This is a video on carbohydrates. Okay, carbohydrates, uh, as you can tell by the name, involve carbon and water, CH2O. And CH2O happens to be the empirical formula for carbohydrates, meaning that you take that and you just multiply it by a number to get the molecular formula for whatever you want. So for glucose, you multiply it by 6 because glucose is C6H12O6. Now this right here is a glucose molecule, and each point represents a carbon atom. I did not know that for the longest time, and so that this was gibberish to me. I did not understand it. So know that each point is a carbon atom. And glucose, as you most likely know, is used in energy. Uh, cellular respiration breaks it down into approximately 36 molecules of ATP. and uh, yeah, one other thing to know for glucose is that in an aqueous solution, it forms a ring structure, meaning uh, it goes from being straight like this to a ring like this, okay? And that brings me to maltose, which is uh, a combination of two glucose molecules that are bonded together through gly glycosidic linkage, uh, which is a fancy name for dehydration and... Uh, disaccharides. So maltose is just a way of storing glucose in a more efficient manner because you have two of them and less space, whatever. Uh, and you need to know that it's a disaccharide, di meaning two. This is a monosaccharide, mono meaning one. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is starch. This molecule in particular is um, amylose and it is much bigger than what is pictured but you can excuse me get a uh, sort of a window into the molecule by just looking at these three uh, three molecules and glucose is made or sorry starch is made up of a bunch of glucose molecules right just uh, bonded together through the same kind of linkage that's used in uh, disaccharides and this form of starch amylose is uh, a less complex form and then its counterpart, amylopectin, because it, it is not branched. Also, all forms of starch are helical, right? meaning that they are not straight, per se, but they sort of, you know, snake around. Amylose, as you can see, is more complex. It has branches, and, uh, yeah. So, starch, to uh, recap, is used for plant energy. And if you're not going to take anything away, just know that plant energy is starch. Um, actually, its counterpart is glycogen, glycogen in animals. Okay, so starch, plants, glycogen, animals. And finally, we have cellulose. And by no means are uh, these five or whatever molecules, uh, str whatever organic molecules, the extent of the carbohydrates. There are much, much more. But uh, you just need to know these couple basic ones. And uh, from that, you can increase your knowledge, or just that could be sufficient for you. So cellulose is, um, once again, a lot of glucose molecules. You can tell glucose is really important in nature. Uh, and it's straight. It's not helical like starch. And it can bond together to form microfibrils. The lines of cellulose bond together to form microfibrils through H-bonds, like right here, right here, right here. And as you know, uh, H-bonds occur between hydrogen and F-O-N, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. So yeah, cellulose is used in animal cell walls, and it's the most abundant protein in the world. Because obviously plants take up a lot of, a lot of space in the world, and if this is the most abundant protein in plants, then using logic, you can know that it's the most abundant protein in the world. So that is my video on carbohydrates. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I wasn't too bad. Thank you.